Locke says that he's given us an account of knowledge that doesn't rely upon any innate ideas. Every last bit of knowledge that we have uh, that in, in his account uh, is from experience. Right. Okay, so he, and he says that he does just as good a job as Plato with his account of knowledge, but it doesn't rely upon any innate ideas. All right. Well, we, we've looked at his theory. We looked at sensation and reflection, the first, the second, the third acts of the mind, and we've seen how it compares to Plato. And let's just take him at his word that he uh, succeeds in every place that, that Plato does. Uh, okay, but here's the question. Has he actually given us an account of knowledge that doesn't rely upon an innate idea? Did he accidentally or you know, did he accidentally smuggle in something that we know without any experience? Yeah. So that, that's the question that, I, that I'm, I'm, I'm posing to you now. So let's ask, let's figure out, does Locke succeed? Has he given us an account of knowledge that doesn't rely upon any innate idea? Has he given us an account of knowledge that doesn't rely upon any kind of rationalist notion? Now, if you say yes, right, then you have to go through each component of, of Locke's theory. We got sensation versus reflection and see whether there's any innate ideas. If you say no, then you have to identify one or more of the places within Locke's theory that there's accidentally an innate idea.